come on you guys, let's go. Now I'm sure you guys were expecting a bit of a subdued celebration tonight. Let's keep things real. I'm sure all of us expected to kind of convincingly beat Barrow tonight, but it's always nice to see goals. So far, it's uh, the second highest goal scoring game under Enzo Maresca. It's nice to see that we know how to find the back of the net now. And today, we saw a hat trick from Christo and Kunku, a Felix from Jao Felix, and a debut goal scored by Neto. So it's great that the attacking players were the ones to make the real difference against Barrett tonight because personally I felt like it was one of those games where we definitely took advantage of the opposition we're playing against. We played well but a lot of the goals we scored came courtesy of the individual golfing class between our players and their players. In terms of our players understanding of the system compared to theirs, in terms of many things on that field today, we dominated possession, we dominated quite a lot of things, but we weren't necessarily peppering Barrow with shots left, right and centre. I do think as we have more understanding playing under Maresca, we'll see that type of game for sure, because we have to remember that we saw a bit of the squad guys used today, and naturally these guys aren't playing games week in, week out. So things are like maybe a little, little rusty. It was interesting seeing that first half lineup, Kasade, and I feel really bad for actually forgetting about him, to be honest with you. When I made my preview, I absolutely forgot that he was still in the squad. I feel so bad for that. And he played a very interesting role, playing in like the deeper position in the Lavia Caicedo role today. We saw the return of Malo Gusto. Great that he gets a first half. I'm sure he'll be starting against Brian and Gusto continues playing this pretty unique role and it does seem like when Maresca has to use like an attacking fullback in his system he wants these guys to be more of like midfield players in those like interior lanes and I think from those positions he's expecting them to make those underlapping runs with a winger and timing that overlaps with a winger too. I feel like there's a great vision behind that. I haven't seen Gusto necessarily you know, master that yet, but that will get better as he has more understanding in the system. I mean, he got the assist today in the first half, which was great to see. Great combination play between Neto and himself. So it's promising to see how he could be like in a few months' time when Gusto has a lot of time in the system. I and mean, then Reese James, hopefully, fingers crossed, touches woods, is able to get fully fit again and find himself in the team because. It does create some interesting uh, thoughts for the opposition to play against, especially when it comes to making those overloads in the final third right. So I felt like I had to comment on how we saw Gusto play today because he played more as like a attacking eight and mid for large parts of this game. And throughout the season, he has kind of played more as like a midfield player than a natural overlapping fullback. But outside of that, there was no surprises really. It did seem like Maresca wanted to see a lot of the sub players, guys like Felix and Kunku and Co, be able to get more game time to boost their understanding. I think that was the right responsible thing to do. And in the end, we basically won the game in the first 10 minutes. I mean, Christo and Kunku, very nice finish. I have to give a lot of credit to Joe Felix for that brilliant scoop ball over the top of Barrow's defense. Again, how often are Barrow facing that type of danger in their league? It's not happening, right? And I thought it was some great ingenuity by Felix. And a nice first time finish from Christo and Kunku. I think maybe this time is a good time to discuss in Kunku, the main difference maker today. That's now six goals under Maresca in the season so far. But that would be nine goals in total if you count his three preseason goals as well. And I think it's safe to say in Kunku is our most natural finisher in the squad. I think we all kind of know this. I'm sure Maresca hates when it comes to match day selections, when he's thinking to himself, oh, like, I, I want Nkunku in my team, but I just physically don't have the says for him just yet. It's a shame that, you know, we aren't living in the future now, 100 years from now, where we can play with 12, 11 outfield players, right? But it does feel like somehow Maresca will have to find a use for Nkunku in the first team because that finishing ability, ultimately, that makes the difference, right? That's what ultimately will be the difference between success and failure. We know that if Nkunku was fit last season, I think we guarantee a Champions League spot. And I think with the little amounts of first-team opportunities he's had this season, but whenever he's called upon, he doesn't need five or six shots to score a goal. Like his first shots a lot of times are always testing the goalkeeper. It's very rare that Nkunku's shots 
Don't even test the keeper. That's how good this guy is in being decisive in the opposition books. Obviously, we're playing against Barra, but I can still respect Nkunku for the goals he scored today, right? The movement in the books, that great back heel finish from the Gusto ball across the six-yard books. I mean, how many players have attempted that move for us all the time, but actually execute it in-game? It don't happen. And of course, he deservedly got the hat trick near the end by um, pouncing on an error, showing how alert he is with his anticipation skills around that box. And he doesn't have to see where the goal is to finish that. Hopefully, Nkunku can kind of find himself in the team. Um, I do think that this guy could really add so much to us right now. But I'm sure that we'll see constant rotations as the season goes on. And to be honest, with the depth of talent Mareska has at his disposal, I do kind of think we'll have like two lineups, one for the first half, one for the second half. And Mareska is going to be more than happy to rotate and rotate because he's not afraid to make those early substitutions compared to many other managers we've seen here over the last few years. So good for Nkunku. But of course, like I said, it was a game where it wasn't necessarily you know, complete dominance, which even though it was, bear with me, I felt like Barra at times, you know, good for them. They came here to try and play. Back in the day, teams like this would just sit back, park the bus and try and just keep a respectable scoreline, but they came to play. They caused some issues. I felt like, especially with their set piece threat, it's one of those things we have to master. If there was like one small observation or even criticism is that I do feel like anytime there's like bounce balls or second ball opportunities in our books from set piece moments we tend to not win them we tend to lose them and the opposition tends to get shots off from these like crazy moments inside the books now better teams will punish us if we don't pattern that detail but Barrow showed listen we're gonna throw them in forward at times we're gonna play on the ball at times when we have to credit to them I think their fans are gonna appreciate that when did they ever get to play against a club like us? So it's good for them. I'm not really fussed about that. But in terms of what else we really saw, I feel like it's really down to the performances. Um, interestingly, we saw Ben Chilwell make his first appearance of the season under Maresca. And he basically just played the same role that Gusto played in the first half. And as I said at the start of this video, I feel like all these attacking style fullbacks Maresca tends to want them to be more like midfield players or who are like alternating their duties between like defence, midfield and supporting player in the final third. And to be honest, you know, I, you could argue Ben's, one of his best qualities is the movements in the final third, right? The underlaps, the overlaps, his shooting outside the books, um, inside the books. You do feel like you could basically just copy what Gusto's done. And to be honest, when Ben came on, I felt like he was finally the connection that Mudrick needed the entire game. In that first half, I did feel like our wingers were a bit isolated at times, especially Mikhailo Mudrick. But once Ben came on down that left hand side, and once he had a partner in crime, I felt like Mudrick's game was really growing and improving. And I felt like he was threatening throughout. Now, and as I said in my preview, I expected a bare minimum assist for Mudrick or a goal involvement in some kind. And I got that today. As he was the one to assist Pedro Nato for his first goal in his Chelsea career. But whenever Mudrick was on the ball, I felt like he was very sharp. I felt like his dribbling had purpose, you know, the stop and starts, uh, the acceleration boosts into space. You know, he was the fastest guy in the field by a mile. And it's just like, Mudrick is like one of the fastest players in the Premier in Europe. I want his pace to be like one of the main weapons for the team, right? And I felt like in a game, of course, we're playing against weak opposition, but it's still the intent. It's still the application and the sharpness is there. And it is slowly continuing like this little small tiny rise I'm seeing in Mudrick now where I thought he was good against Servette as well. And hopefully now he builds on this and continues because those nice touches on the ball, the cuts and sides, the skills, the quick step overs, that's where the talent is. It's up to him now to do justice for himself and really just showcase what he's about because if it does like click for him, this guy could be one of the most dangerous wingers in the Prem. I think we all kind of know that. So let's see what he does from there. But outside of that, I guess the game ends. And the story is, you know, the substitutions, right? Of course, the Chimpong came on. I'm Tyree George. I did feel like maybe a Chimpong. I felt like he was nervous. That was the vibe I was getting. I saw some mistakes in his game at times, maybe losing the ball, hitting it off the pitch at times. Uh a bit more nervous facing the barrel winger more than he should have. 
Um, maybe again, you know, these guys are still young. It's not just about having quality on the ball. It's about their temperament and how you like manage yourself playing in front of 40,000 in the stadium as well, plus many other details and facets. And you're coming on as a sub and you have to get a feel for the game. So, uh, you know, I'm sure when he gets more moments and opportunities, he'll showcase himself even more. Tyreek George, um, of course, unfortunately, one of his first big moments in that second half was a pass played into him where he had the moment to make it 5-0 and score from a first-time ball. But unfortunately, he completely missed the target. He showed some nice touches afterwards and some nice combo plays and he took a decent shot from the right-hand side after that. But um, again, you know, these guys are better, but, uh, you know, expect more from them. And I guess the final player I have to, like, make an observation on would be Carney Chukwameka because out of all the subs, I'd say he came on. He had this bit of spark to his game. I don't know if you guys noticed that in Carney, but he had a spark. I felt like he was looking to take guys on in tight spaces, showing a bit of flair, showing a little bit of combination play in this game. And, you know, I was watching that game, I was thinking, damn, like how sad that essentially he's getting little minutes now because my theory has always been the club were forced to have to buy Kin and Deuce before as part of the deal to bring Enzo Maresca to the club. Because as we know, isn't it? funny that during the start of the summer every single club that was coming under scrutiny or falling foul of psr rules all did business with each other to make sure that everyone was safe no one's that can't be by coincidence and i do feel like to get maresca Dursby Hall was part of that deal and sadly it's come at the expense of Klukumeka maybe getting more game time because you know, even little cameos like this, man, you just think to yourself, he would really cook under Maresca. I think he would really excel playing this type of football. He still has a lot of strong support and backing from his teammates. Hopefully, as the season goes on, things go his way where he can get more game time on the fields. But uh, yeah, it's a shame because he's clearly is a talented kid. And if not for injuries, his future would be completely different, right? But um, regardless, it's nice to get a big home win, Maresca says, after getting three away wins on the bounce now, he wants to translate that into home form. And to get five goals in front of the Sanford Bridge fans, to give the fans a bit of like confidence going into our game, I think against Brighton this weekend. And hopefully, you know, they can get behind the team. Hopefully now that there's been a, a bit more pressure away from the team, not playing in front of the home fans. The home fans are watching the team from a distance. Maybe everything's making a bit more sense now. I feel like under Maresca, that's what I would say now. It feels like things are very slowly, I'm, I really mean it, very slowly, starting to make sense in terms of how we play, what type of team we are, and what we're trying to do. And hopefully that gets communicated across to everyone, because we have to come and like support each other and back it right now. And, you know, it's nice to see that we're a team that knows how to find the back of the net now. So, yeah, that was kind of my friend's expected big win against Barrow tonight. Good confidence booster. I think a few players performed decent today. They'll definitely pose some questions to Enzo, Maresca, most notably Christo and Kunku. I feel like in Kunku now, Maresca can't be thinking to himself, this guy can't be in my first team. Let's see how things go. And my friends, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up keep things moving and i hope you guys have a good night obviously i've released a news video today in case you guys want more blue lines tv so watch it straight after this review and on that note i'm in efc this is blue lines tv see you all tomorrow cool